Hey guys, all right, so today we're gonna to talk about alternator charging these vans. Uh, in this particular model of van and with the battery complex that we're building, we decided to go with a Renogy a DC to DC charger. Victron makes a great DC to DC charger as well. So we're gonna walk you through some of the little intricacies of how we want to conduct alternator charging in these vans. So let's start by walking through uh, the, 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 the wire runs that would happen from the battery bank coming in to your what we want to call our starter battery. So we're going to reference two certain batteries. We're going to reference our starter battery, which is what the truck runs on. And then we're going to reference our house battery, the set of batteries that are going to run most of the components in the van. So in many of these vans, there's predominantly two or three ways to charge your batteries. You likely will have solar. You'll likely have shore power and then alternator charging is a third option and a very popular option as you're driving down the road. So having said that, let's walk through kind of how things come in to this part of the van to begin the process of alternator charging. All right, so let's start with this positive run. So there's two wires that run from our alternator charger. There's an 18 gauge and a four gauge wire. This four gauge wire will go to a positive connection over near our starter battery bank. And the 18 gauge wire that you see here is being used as a remote turn on, turn off of the charger. So when you start your engine, a signal will get sent through this black 18 gauge cable that will tell your alternator charger, the Renogy, to turn on. And the positive is one part of two cables that will actually provide power to your charger. The positive, is being done from the starter battery. We'll show you how that connection is made. And then instead of running a third four gauge cable for ground from the starter battery all the way back to the Renogy, we just come straight out of the Renogy and chassis ground it uh, with your house battery bank. So what you'll see here is you have two choices. We could have run this positive cable directly into our starter battery. And we talked a little, you know, we talked a little bit about the options for how to do that. We could have come straight into the battery, but things get pretty uh, crowded or coming into this box that sits underneath your driver's seat. And there are open positions in this box for you to utilize. Now, if you were to make a direct run directly into your starter battery bank, it would be unfused. So we want to avoid that. We, we want to provide some protection here for this wiring. So what we've done is we've taken the starter battery and we've run it into this box and into our circuit breaker. So we have a circuit breaker that is mounted back here underneath the, the driver's seat. Now the reason that we position the circuit breaker in this part of the van is to make it easy for someone, if you were to trip this breaker, to reset it. All you'd have to do is forward your seat uh, up, reach into this box, and reset this circuit breaker. So we have our, our, our wire coming from our Renogy into the circuit breaker. And then on the other side of the circuit breaker, we have a run that comes into this open spot in the battery, uh, in this battery location here. So this wire runs through this box up into the circuit breaker. And the other side of the circuit breaker, this is the wire that runs all the way back to the DC to DC charger. Okay, so this is our remote start 18 gauge wire that runs back to the DC to DC charger. In a similar fashion to what we just discussed for positive power, we could have run this cable directly into this box and into a location back here underneath this lid that I mentioned previously where we could have provided power. Now, if we would have done this, that would mean that every time you start your car, start the truck, the van, you're immediately gonna turn on your DC to DC charger and it's gonna run 100% full time. That puts a lot of strain on your alternator. You know, you might overcharge your batteries. It's not necessary. So what we've done is we've taken this 18 gauge remote start wire, which you'll see here, and it splits off. One of the wires that comes from your DC to DC charger runs through this complex underneath the dash and pops into a factory Mercedes auxiliary switch. The other cable, the second cable, runs back through the dash, comes back through here into this battery uh, complex, 
and then connects into this back right location. There's three different locations here you can use. The reason we selected this third location, and this is important, is this third location only receives power when your engine is running. Whereas this second location, for example, uh, will receive power even if your van is turned on, but the engine is not running. And that's not what you want. You don't want your DC to DC charger to be running uh, without the engine running. So we selected this that third location here. Okay, so let's put this all together. Uh, currently on my Victron app, uh, my smart BMV, uh, my battery monitor, is telling me that my current voltage is at 13.35 is at volts. The engine is not running, the van is not even turned on. So if I provide power to the van, but not the engine, we'll hear the van come on, and my voltage remains steady at 13.35, okay? So now we're gonna start the van and with the engine running, but the switch in the off position, we still won't see a change here. So we'll go ahead and start the van. You'll notice here, the volts are still at 13.35 volts. Now, if you're driving down the road and you wanna provide some charge, we simply turn the switch to the on. This turns on the charger and you'll immediately start to see that we're climbing in voltage. Now, if we were to trip a breaker, I'll reach down here and I'll trip this breaker. You'll notice the voltage starts to decrease. 13.4. Now it may hold steady because it received a little charge, but you see it's slowly coming down, 13.39. I'll come in here and I'll reset this breaker. Boom, 13.6, 6.1, 2. we start climbing again. I come back over here, I'll turn my switch to the off location, and we start to decrease again. So this now provides an ability for you to control when you want to alternate or charge or not your battery bank. All right, so that wraps up the uh, installation of our DC to DC uh, charger to provide alternator power to your battery bank. Uh, please don't hesitate to ask any questions. Uh, follow us on Instagram at Checks Vans, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Look for more videos to come.